Hello, mic check, mic check. Mic check. Hello.
ladies and gentlemen, fellow yoga enthusiasts and practitioners, good morning, magandang umaga, mabuhay, and namaste to all of you. Welcome to the International Day of Yoga. My name is RJ Ladespa. Very honored to be here, not only as your host on behalf of the Embassy of India, but a fellow yoga practitioner like all of you. And it's so wonderful that after two years, we're able to do a wonderful gathering of all yoga practitioners from all over Metro Manila face to face. So may I please ask all of you a little favor. Can you please take a good look at your fellow yoga enthusiast beside you on the left side, on the right side, behind you, in front of you, and please all greet them. Namaste, please. Namaste to all of you, namaste. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And of course, one more round of applause, please, to the Embassy of India. Thank you so much for putting together this wonderful, wonderful celebration where we are all able to enjoy our practice all together. At our, can you believe it, the eighth international edition of the Day of Yoga. And today we have a little treat for all of you. It might be for the first time for many of you to watch this. And for those, uh, all of our uh, Indian expatriates and also people from the Embassy of India may be very familiar with this celebration. May I please call on Ms. Vartika Agarwal to present the Ganesh Tuti, a common ceremony in India that signifies the start of something positive and auspicious. Ms. Vartika is actually an electronics engineer by profession and a student of the Indian classical dance form of Bharat Natyam. Please give a round of applause to Ms. Vartika Agarwal.
பிரியம் மகாகாவிய நாடகாதி பிரியம் பூஷித வாகன மோதக பிரியம் மகாகாவிய நாடகாதி பிரியம் பூஷித வாகன மோதக பிரியம் பாப்பமகமரி சரி சரி சமாகம பப்பனி சரி கமரி சரி Thank you so much with lovely lovely way for us a special way to celebrate today's program with the Ganesh Luti thank you so much again Miss Vartik Agarwal please give her one more round of applause thank you so much for joining us here today and as we mentioned earlier on today we celebrate the eighth international day of yoga and it's celebrated every year on June 21 since 2015 now this has become an annual celebration after the United Nations General Assembly back in 2015 declared this as the International Day of Yoga and the theme of our International Day of Yoga is quite apt especially in trying times like these it is yoga for humanity and in the words of our great prime minister the honorable prime minister narendra modi the theme appropriately portrays how during the peak of the covid-19 pandemic Yoga served humanity in alleviating the sufferings and in the emerging post-COVID geopolitical scenario. Now, how, how many of you, when you were stuck in your own homes doing, were from over doing yoga? So please raise your hands. All of you were doing yoga at home, just like me over here. And how many of you were also doing Zoom yoga sessions where you were practicing together with fellow yoga practitioners? How wonderful that we were able to celebrate this practice, even. from the privacy of our own homes but celebrating it with the rest of our yoga community and as we all know the practice of yoga brings about compassion kindness and fosters a true sense of unity and builds resilience not just here in the philippines not just in india but the world over and as we begin with today's auspicious program here is a message from our dear prime minister of india narendra modi on today's occasion please watch this friends yoga tells us that so many problems might be out there but we have infinite solutions within ourselves we are the biggest source of energy in our universe we do not realize this energy because of the many divisions that exist at times the lives of people exist in silos the divisions reflect in the overall personality as well the shift from silo to union is yoga a proven way to experience a realization of oneness e yoga i am reminded of the words of the great gurudev tagore who said and i quote the meaning of our self is not to be found in its separateness from god and others but in the ceaseless realization of yoga of union unquote the mantra of vasudev kutumkam which india has followed since ages is now finding global acceptance we all are praying for each other's well being 
If there are threats to humanity, yoga often gives us a way of holistic health. Yoga also gives us a happier way of life. I'm sure yoga will continue playing its preventive as well as positive role in healthcare of masses. And I can thank you so much. A round of applause, please, for those truly inspiring words from our dear Prime Minister Modi. And they said yoga is all about union. And that's why we are all united today in our International Day of Yoga practice. Now, to make yoga truly accessible for all, what happened was that the government of India, in consultation with leading yoga teachers and gurus all over India, developed what they call the Common Yoga Protocol. Now, this is a comprehensive yoga practice which consists of, number one, asanas, number two, pranayamas, and number three, meditation. And today, we are very, very fortunate that some very generous souls, fellow yoga practitioners and teachers, will lead us through our common yoga protocol. So before we begin, let's give a round of applause, please, to all the yoga teachers and gurus who have come here today to share the protocol with the rest of us. So today we begin, of course, with our, if all of you have been doing a yoga practice, we begin, of course, with our Surya Namaskar, our sun salutations. And today we'll be led into what they call the first part of the yoga protocol or the loosening practice to be led by Janice Cuevas. Now, Janice is a HR consultant by profession and a yoga practitioner and teacher by passion. And of course, also very generous by being a volunteer for kids battling cancer by heart. Janice is a certified Ashtanga Vinyasa teacher, as long as, uh, along with being a yin and tra trauma-informed yoga teacher. Please welcome our guru here for this morning to lead us in Surya Namaskar, Ms. Janice Cuevas. Please give her a round of applause. Good morning, everyone. Can you, can all the yogis at the back hear me? Hi, everyone. Namaste. Good morning. Magandang umaga. Thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Janice, and I'll be here to guide you through a short grounding practice before we begin the Surya Namaskar. Okay? So from here, find your most comfortable seated pose, maybe an Indian sit with your feet crossed, and then maybe you can move side to side. If you have your lotus, half lotus, please find your way there. And then ever so gently, maybe just take a gentle breath in through the nose as you straighten your back. And then as you exhale gently, relax the shoulders down. Take another two more cycles of breath here, inhaling through the nose. And then exhaling out. One more cycle, inhale, and exhale. If you're comfortable, you can keep this gentle pace of breathing, or you may begin to start your ujjayi breathing. You may gently relax your head and tilt your chin downwards, softening your gaze on the floor. Or if you feel comfortable, you can even close your eyes. And for this moment, the invitation is for us to be in this present moment. And our thoughts, our monkey minds can travel back into the past, or maybe thinking about what are going to eat next, the things to do on our to-do list. If you haven't given yourself the permission to rest, and appreciate this present moment, you are invited to do so. Whenever your thoughts begin to wander, because you are a genius, allow your thoughts to be anchored and to be calmed down through your breath. 
Notice how the breath passes in of your nose and as it passes gently out through your nose. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you find your center, I invite you to think and to listen to the right side of your ear. Finding that faintest sound that you can hear on the right side. Take a breath here, inhale, and exhale. And then very slowly, try to bring your awareness to the left side of your ear. Trying to find that faintest sound on the left side. And as you do so, take a breath. And then slowly bring your awareness back into the center. As you find your balance in the stillness, try to notice if your back is leaning forward, are you leaning backwards, are you towards the left or the right. And wherever you find yourself, the invitation is to bring yourself into that inner core, that strong center, that space of peace within you. Take one more cycle of breath here. Inhale and exhale. Very gently bring your left hand on your chest, right hand on your belly, and just feel how it's like. Notice your heartbeat. Notice your, your belly as you draw in air and as you draw it out. And remember that you are not only taking in air or oxygen, you are taking in life force, prana, that gift of life. And in every breath that you take in, envision that you are planting that seed of gratitude in your heart. And as you exhale out, you are spreading and sharing that seed of gratitude to the space around you, to the community, to the whole country, and to the world. Let your light shine. Ever so gently, bring your hands together in prayer position in front of your heart center. And feel free to set an intention for your practice this morning. Perhaps dedicate this for a loved one or a certain virtue or value that you wish to harness for today. If you feel expansive, maybe sending good intentions of peace to places and people who need it the most. Sending loving energies to different parts of the world so that as yogis, as human beings, we can bring back the kindness in humankind. All together, let's open our practice with one grounding mantra of Om. Inhale to prepare. hands on top of your third eye and we bow down to honor the love and the light in each one namaste slowly bring your head back up relax your hands down and we're going to syn synchronize our breath with our movements so on your next cycle of breath inhale circle your hands up feel the stretch here feel the palms touch at the top of your head 
And then as you exhale, circle the hands down, fingertips all the way down to the mat. Slow and steady breath. Inhale, lifting up. If you have space on the neck, maybe look up towards your thumbs. And then as you exhale, slowly take them down. We'll do this for three more cycles. Inhale as you move up, big breath. Palms touch. Exhale, slowly take the hands down. Feel the tension. Release down your neck and your shoulders. Last two. Inhale up, big breath. Gaze up. Exhale, slowly down. Last one. Inhale, move up. Exhale, take the hands down. So we're going to bring in a bit more movement starting from the head. So take your hands on your knees and on your next breath. Inhale, straighten the back. Exhale, bring your chin towards your chest. On your next breath, bring your right ear towards your right shoulder, rotating the head, breathing in as you move and tilt the head back. Exhale to the left, all the way down. If there's one part that feels extra tense, feel free to take a pause and give yourself an extra breath there. We'll do one last cycle. Inhale to the right. All the way up. Feeling the body. Exhale as you move down. Taking a pause at the center with your chin tucked to your chest. Take a breath here. Inhale. Noticing the subtle changes in the body as you exhale. Inhale slowly, move the head to the left side, left ear to the left shoulder, tilting the head back. And then exhale as you move down for one cycle. We'll do that for two more times. You're doing great. Inhale, move up. Exhale as you move down, releasing tension on the neck and the shoulders. Last cycle, inhale up. And then exhale, slowly taking it down at your own unique pace. Take a pause at the center. And then inhale, slowly lift the head up. Exhale, relax. Inhale, we're going to sweep the arms up. And then as you exhale, take your right hand down, left arm up. And then you can walk your hands a bit further away from the body, up to your own degree. Feel the stretch. Allow your hips to be pinned down and feel that energy rising on the side body. Take a breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Come back to the center. Left hand down. Right arm up. Big breath. Inhale. And exhale out through the nose. We'll do that for one more cycle. Inhale up. Exhale, right hand down, maybe walking the hands a bit further. Or if you wish, you can slowly shift your chest up towards the sky and welcome this brand new day. Take one more breath here, inhale, and then exhale. Inhale, come back center, moving to the other side. Again, shifting the chest up and open to the sky, opening your heart to the gifts of this wonderful day. Exhale out. Inhale, come back center. Exhale, relax. We're going to find our way into our tabletop position for our cat and cow. They say that we are as young as our spine. So take your hands down, fingers spread wide. Allow your elbows, wrists, elbows, and shoulders stacked, knees under your hips, front of the feet on the mat. So you might want to put a bit more space in between the knees so that your hips are fully supported. So not together, not too wide. And once you've found your space, take a breath in your neutral spine, engage your core. Exhale, relax, and we're going to begin three cycles of cat and cow. Inhale, drop the belly, tailbone goes up, heart shines forward, and we look up. Exhale, round the back, tailbone in, chin towards your chest. This is one. Inhale up. Exhale, round the back for two. Last one, inhale up. Exhale, round the back for three. 
Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale to child's pose. Take the knees as wide as the mat. Toes touch at the back. Sink your buttocks to meet your heels. And then maybe you can stack your fist one on top of the other and rest your forehead here. Or if you feel comfortable, maybe extend your hands forward. And rest your forehead on the mat. Wherever you are, know that your body is your best teacher. Find what space and breathing that suits you best, that you resonate with best for today. Take one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, slowly lift the head up. Coming back to tabletop and we'll be slowly coming into our downward facing dog. Tuck your toes and when you feel ready, inhale, lift your knees off the mat, send your hips back in this inverted triangle. Let your hips be the highest point. You can pedal your feet, bending one knee after the other, just to loosen up the joints, warming up the hamstrings, maybe bending one knee at a time or both knees at the same time. If your heels don't touch the mat just yet, that's totally fine. That's why we're here in the practice. Be kind to yourself. Very gently find your way into stillness, gazing in between your feet. Take one breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, gaze forward. Step the right foot forward in between the hands, followed by the left. Exhale, we're going to fold forward. Hands on your toes. Inhale, press the feet, use your core, lift yourself up, hands up, look up. Exhale, hands to the side, Samastiti. So we begin Surya Namaskar A, three rounds. Find yourselves at the top of the mat, feet together, take a breath. Palms facing forward, shoulders relaxed, maybe finding a smile on your face. Breathe in. And breathe out. Let's begin. Inhale, lift your hands up, look up. Exhale, folding forward, hands down, head down. Inhale, halfway lift, gazing forward. Exhale, hands down, step back, alternating the feet. Hinge your body forward. Maybe take the knees down or full chaturanga, your choice. Belly and chest down on the mat. Untuck your toes, inhale, upward facing. Tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing. Staying here for five cycles of breath. One, ujjayi breathing. Two, gentle gaze in between the feet. Three, Four, calm the mind. And five. Slowly inhale, gaze forward. We're going to step the right foot forward, followed by the left. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, press the feet, lift up. Hands up, look up. Exhale, hands to the side, Samastiti. Second round. Inhale, lift the arms up, gaze up. Exhale, fold forward, hands down, head down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back. Exhale, chaturanga, body and belly all the way down. Inhale, upward facing. Tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing. Staying here for five deep breaths. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, gaze forward, step the left foot forward, followed by the right. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lift up, lift your hands up, gazing up towards your thumbs. 
Exhale, hands to the side. Last one. Inhale, lift the arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hinging from the hips, folding forward. Move with your breath. That's it. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back. Chaturanga, all the way down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Letting the back straighten here and feel this pose for five breaths. Two, releasing tension on the back, on the neck. Three, have your feet as wide as your hips. Four, and five. Inhale, gaze forward, step the left foot forward, followed by the right. Exhale, we fold forward. Inhale, press the feet, lift your arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hands to the side, Samastiti. Surya Namaskar B, one round. A come inhale, bend the knees, hands up, look up, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, folding forward, hands down, head down. Inhale, halfway lift, gazing forward. Exhale, hands down, step, hop, or jump back. Exhale down, Chaturanga. Untuck your toes. Inhale, push, upward facing dog. Tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze forward. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. Bend the right knee. Left heel spins down. And when you feel balanced, inhale, come up. Warrior one. Breathe in. Breathe out. Letting go of any expectations. One more breath here. Inhale. And exhale, take it down. Step that right foot back. Flow in your vinyasa. Exhale, down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Left side, inhale, gaze forward. Step the left foot forward in between the hands. Right heel spins down. Find your balance. No need to rush. Inhale, come up. That's it. Strong and steady. Keep your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. One last breath. Inhale. Exhale. We take it down. Step the left foot back. Exhale down, Chaturanga. Untuck your toes. Inhale, upward facing. Tuck your toes. Exhale, downward facing. We stay here for five cycles of breath. Spread the fingers wide. One. Two. Appreciating the warmth in the body. Three. Relax your neck. Four. And five. Inhale, gaze forward. Step, hop, or jump in between the hands. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, bend the knees. Sink your hips down. Lift your arms up. Chair pose. Exhale, back to standing. Samasana. We're going to continue on with our yoga protocol with our next teacher. Thank you so much. Namaste. Again, namaste. Thank you so much, Ms. Janice Cuevas. Let's give her one more round of applause. Thank you so much for sharing our Surya Namaskar with all of us. And for our next yoga protocol practice, we are very honored today by the presence of Mr. Chandru Matani. Now stemming from his learning experience at the world-famous school of the BKS Iyengar School of Yoga in Mumbai. Back in 1975, Mr. Chandru 
has been diligently practicing yoga for more than half his life. So he looks half as young at the same time. Upon his arrival here in the Philippines back in 1989, after setting up Speedo Philippines, he began spreading the knowledge of yoga among family and friends. At 80 years young, he has been a voice and evidence of the holistic way of life that one can achieve through the practice of yoga in their lives. And I understand Mr. Chandru Matanis brought along his students who will always also demonstrate for him right now. So again, a round of applause please for Mr. Chandru Matani. What's nice is you are all nice and warmed up, right? So I don't have to twist your arm too much. Namaste, and a very good morning to our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to welcome you to the world of yoga, which is indeed a rare gift of ancient India. Yoga is incredibly beneficial to our overall well-being. It improves our flexibility, perfects our posture, builds muscle power, bone health, boosts immunity, blood circulation, and promotes heart health. The American Heart Association says that yoga can help lower blood pressure, increase lung capacity, improve respiratory function, and heart rate, boost circulation, and muscle tone. That is why the heart loves yoga. If you have never tasted honey, no matter what I say, you cannot imagine the flavor. So let's get started with the yoga protocol we will go through the selected items for maximum benefits. Thank you. We have with us Ms. Bea Chua of Art of Living, Mr. Petteri Makitalio, Mr. Rohit Chivukula from ICAP, Mr. Pavan Kumar Budiga, <coughs> also from ICAP, and Mr. Shub Maitani, who's a student in America. So we are going to do yoga asanas together with you. The first one which we have selected, which is part of your protocol, is the trunk movement. So keep the legs about one foot apart. Raise both the arms up to your shoulder with palms facing each other. That's your double barrel gun, by the way. So you, while exhaling, you twist the body to the left. Slowly, slow movements, yeah. Hold it for a count of, you have to go behind, behind you, shoot behind you, so that your right hand touches your left shoulder. Go all the way behind you, that's right. That's what will cause the twist, right? All we have to remember, simply put, you are as young as your spine. 
So the more you twist it, keep it in a while, the younger you get. So please come forward. Then the same way, while, take an inhalation now, exhale and turn to your right. Yeah. Just think you are shooting somebody behind you. And slowly come forward. Now the next one, It'll add 20 years to your knees, for sure. So, inhale, get your arms parallel to the ground, inhale and go down. Go down a little more. Just imagine you are sitting on a chair. Stay as long as you can. Okay, we'll make it a count of 10 or 15 and slowly come up. And one more time, please go down. This time you'll find you can go down more, right? A little more, a little more. And we can come up. Don't forget, this will add 20 years to your knees. Now, in the standing posture, a very basic posture is the tree, the Tadasana, the palm tree posture. So, again, stand, I would say, six inches, a little closer, the feet, so you can be solid like a tree. Inhale and lift your arms up to the shoulder. As you are there, go on your toes. Going on your toes increases your mass in the bone. The, your bone marrow increases. Your bone density will go up. If you do this every day, check your bone density a year later, 100%, it'll have gone up. So what this prevents is problems of old age, you see. Then come down, one more time. The balancing is very good for you. One more time, please go up again. This asana also brings stability in the body, helps to clear up congestion of the spinal nerves and corrects your faulty posture. Thank you, please come down. And we go on to the next posture, which is one of the most important, okay? So raise your hands, raise your hands up, and slowly come down towards your feet. This is the Padahastasana, the hands to feet posture. Now, as you're doing this, please point your head to the ground. That's right, allowing full circulation to your brain. Please do this every day, two minutes even. It'll make a big difference. Stay there for a while. I can see some can touch their feet so comfortably and some are having a bit of a problem, especially the people with long legs. Right. So keep trying, and now you can come up. And we'll do this one more time, so you can feel how easy it becomes the second attempt. Please, one more time, raise your hands, breathe in, and exhale as you go down. Okay, coming up slowly. <clears throat> uh, 
and hands down. One more thing, when you do yoga, please put a smile, right? Because it works together. Yoga is a complete package for your whole body, right? So the next standing posture is the Ardha Chakrasan. So slowly take your hands behind your back, right? Breathe in and breathe out as you go back. You know, during the day you get tired, just do this. And you'll be renewed immediately, slowly coming up. And one more time, breathe in and breathe out as you go back. Coming up, Ardha Chakrasan makes the spine flexible and strengthens the spinal nerves and the muscles. So there are benefits to each of these. Continuing our standing postures, we'll do the triangle. It's called Trikonasan, the triangle posture. Be sideways. No, left foot going forward, left foot fo going forward. No, the left foot. Yes, stretch. Keep your legs straight. Legs straight, lock your knees, literally lock your knees. Lift your arms, straight legs. And then go to your left, no. No, no, the other way, the triangle. Left hand on your left, right. And look up at your palm. Look up at your palm and you'll see how difficult it is to get that balance. So it takes a while. Imagine a wall behind your back. Sometimes it's good to practice against a wall. Slowly coming up. Now, bend to your right side. The side you are bending to, the foot has to turn a bit to that side. So if you're going right, your foot is a little pointed to the right. The right hand, no, 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 please. Yes, the right hand on the right foot. And please look up at your palm. It's that effort that turns your spine enough to give you that power in the spine. Sometimes it's difficult to balance. Slowly coming up. And we go into the warrior pose. The warrior pose, left foot forward, It's the archer. The one we have chosen is the archer. Now, straighten your body a little bit. So it's a 90% straight drop. Your point of aim is your middle finger. You're shooting, that's the arrow. Go down as much as you can. Excellent. And slowly coming up, we change sides. No, right foot forward. Just take the foot forward. You can still be looking here if you like. Just change the foot. Please face me. Yes, and the right foot is forward, that's all. So I can see what you're doing. <laughs> Go down and really imagine you are shooting an arrow. Point of aim. Straighten your body a bit. So you're not leaning forward. 
you are straight, your back, your body is straight. And that's where the challenge comes. Before you leave a pose, do that one inch extra, one inch more, and then we can come up. Okay, I think we've deserved the right to sit down. So please sit down. And get into Dandasan. Danda means a stick, a bamboo. So legs straight ahead of you. Now slowly bring the feet together. And the feet together to the groin to the groin, bend it to the groin, and get ready to fly, right, the butterfly. This is an amazing posture. It's fun, you feel you're flying, but you are doing amazing things to the groin area, which is never exercised. So this is another one you can do regular. So we'll stop for a while, and we do one more time. It's an amazing one. This time, pull the feet closer to the groin. The closer you can go, the better. One more time, about 20 flaps with your knees. Okay, thank you. We'll fold our legs, just sit in Sukhasana. It's like taking a breather. From here, we get into the thunderbolt posture. What a name they have given it. It's Vajrasana. Vajra means thunderbolt. So please get into Vajrasan, which is something you can build into your lifestyle while watching TV, while reading a book. You can even lean against a sofa, but maintain this posture. It will digest your food three times faster. This is proved three times. So imagine after dinner, you'd normally take three hours to digest. This will do it in one hour. It's so powerful. You do about five minutes, 10 minutes. You get pins and needles in your feet. You can sit on the sofa, go back on the floor. Stay as long as you can. The Japanese have adopted this so well. They do their tea ceremonies in Vajrasana. They even have meals sitting like this. Right? Their tables are made like that. Okay. Excellent. Right, so now we get into Ardha Ushtrasan. It's the half camel posture. Now, hands on your hips and bend backwards. Stretch as much as you can. It helps to strengthen back and neck mus muscles. It relieves constipation and back pain. It increases blood circulation to the head and cardiac reason. So overall, very strong, gives you a good balance. Okay. The next one 
is the world's most popular one. It's the hair posture, the sasakasan. So we go back to Vajrasan, right? It's like a prayer pose also. Go forward, take your hands forward, right? But you must look up. You must be able to see in the front. And sometimes we do yoga with partners. If the butt is too high, ask your partner to sit on the butt. So you are squeezed, all you are flattened out. Stretch your arms forward more. Try to bring the ultimate is the chin on the floor. This is an amazing posture. It reduces stress and anxiety. It tones up reproductive organs, relieves constipation, it improves digestion, and helps to relieve back pain. It's like an all-in-one. Okay, coming up. You know, when you are shopping the whole day, do this. In two minutes, you'll be refreshed. Then, the ultimate twist for your spine, the vakrasan, the spinal twist posture. So, legs forward. Take your right hand behind you. Left. Okay, you can take your left hand behind you. That's also fine. But you have to just remember which one you did, so you do the other one following it, yeah? This is a bit difficult in the start. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. Actually, the foot doesn't cross over in this one, yeah. It stays together. And try to get the fingertips on the ground. Even that's fine. But please look behind you. That is what causes the spinal twist. Look behind you as much as you can. Okay. Now we change. Come forward. The other leg. The hand at the back is like a rudder. It'll help you to twist as much as you want. Right? And then the knee also will push in the, uh, the elbow will push in the knee to further get the twist. This incidentally stimulates the pancreas functions and helps in the management of diabetes. So a lot of benefits. We can slowly come forward. And go supine. So lie on your stomach. This is so good. Here, the feet open up about four feet, four to five feet. But the trick is the heel and the toe must touch the floor. It's like a breaststroke when you kick that way, yeah. Four, five feet apart, the head will rest. Take your right hand on left hand and put your forehead on it. It's one of the most relaxing postures. 
This has a big benefit. If you ever experience sciatic pain, once you start doing this, it'll be gone. No more sciatic pain, because there's a nerve. When, you're, when you put your feet like this, that gets back into position. That nerve is not disturbed otherwise. This is a posture you can stay as long as you like, you know. Even listening to good music. So the idea is to build yoga into your lifestyle. Make it a part of you. Okay, before you fall asleep, <laughs> we'll get together for the cobra back into action. So, hands under your shoulders, please. And slowly lift up skywards like a cobra ready to attack. This is amazing for your back. Anybody has back problems, do this every day, it'll be gone. In this, the legs are a little closer together. So the legs are firm. Without putting load on the lumbar region, that is important. This also relieves stress, reduces abdominal fat, relieves constipation, and helps to relieve backache and bronchial problems because you're stretching the neck, that whole area. There's the military way of doing it with the entire legs go off the floor. Okay? So lift your whole body off the floor, only toes at the back. Yeah, toes will support, that's it, that's it. So just imagine, it's 10 times stronger. Your feet are on the floor, but the body is off the ground. Lift the legs off the ground. Yes, yes. This is the military cobra. Okay, thank you. And the next one is also supine. So all you do is flip over. It's called Setu Bandhasan, the bridge posture. So either hold your ankles or get your hands under the heels, whatever you like. Breathe in and breathe out as you come up. Let the chin get into your chest. The higher you go, the better. That looks pretty good, like the bridge on the River Kwai. Okay, slowly come down, and we'll do this one more time to really dig the chin into the chest. This one, please come up. It relieves depression, anxiety, strengthens your lower back muscles, it stretches abdominal organs, improves digestion, and helps to relieve constipation. So it's another must-do posture. And slowly come down. What supports this? is the Pavan Muktasan.
bring the knees to your chest. Literally hug yourself. The tighter, the better. They say hugging is very good for you. This is the only way you can hug yourself. Normal breathing. Please never hold your breath. If you can bring up the head for a while even, bring up the head a little bit off and on, then you can put the head back. Okay. Now, for the best. It's called Viparit Karni. Viparit Karni is like a half shoulder stand. When you see it sideways, it's like a 45 degree angle. So you have to lift yourself up. Up you go. The butt goes up. That's right, that's right. But try to hold it there for a while. There you go. Oh, excellent, excellent. Almost everyone's into it. But you have to lift the butt a little more. That's it. That's very nice. But if you have a back problem or any problem, then don't try this. Get slowly into your strides because this is one of the most important postures. And it's clearly written in the Yoga Sutras that if you do this, make sure there's a full dinner plate ready for you. So that's how powerful it is. It creates a vacuum inside so you can enjoy the following lunch, breakfast, dinner, or whenever you are doing this. So do try to do this every day if you can. And what follows this, please come down, is called Shavasan, the corpse or the dead body posture. Right? So with palms facing up, literally go limp and it's a still body and a still mind not even the eyes should flutter be totally still and that's how your immunity goes up the shoulder blades at the back they are together the chest comes out and the breathing becomes very very easy very slow If you are ever tired, just do this and you'll be fine in two minutes. Keeping your eyes closed, just turn to your right side using your right wrist as a pillow. So relax another 30 seconds. Literally like you are going to sleep before you come up. And slowly now open your eyes and you can slowly come up. Usually even one session of yoga, which is something like this, you've done a bit of breathing, breathing is to come and some meditation. When you do one session, 
believe you me, you will be totally different. You will feel the change in one session. It's been proved. They have checked the heart rate, blood pressure, everything is under control. So the choice is yours. Are you going to do it every day? Even 15 minutes a day, that'll help. I've done every day for the last 10 years. I've been practicing 50 years, but I didn't realize how important it is to do every day. So please do even 10, 15, 20 minutes every day. That makes a big difference. There are many other postures. There are postures which will turn the clock backwards, the fountain of youth. Yeah, for that, maybe next year or the next, I, I have a yoga class every Monday, so you, you're welcome. <laughs> so thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. And again, thank you so much, Mr. Chandru Matani. Uh, Mr. Chandru, if you don't mind, Mr. Chandru, uh, for those who want to be able to pursue your yoga classes, or uh, Mr. Matani, sir, if, if they want to pursue your yoga classes, maybe you can just share a bit more on how they can attend your classes. Would you like to share some of the, how, where, where they can attend your classes? So for those who are interested, uh, where, where can they attend the class and can they also find some information online about your classes? Hello again. I have a Monday class in my building in the function room. Capacity about 30 people. So whoever wants to attend is most welcome every Monday, 7 p.m. After you are done with your work and you want to refresh yourself, do come. This is Pacific Plaza Towers, BGC, in the function room. Yeah. But please let me know, and uh, I can make, I have to make arrangements so that uh, they will let you in and not ask too many questions. Yeah. Do they have my number? Get, uh, you can give your cell phone number, yes, sir. I'll give you my number, 0917-895-0780. Can we say that one more time? Uh, two more times, sir, if you don't mind. 0917-895-0780. You'll be sufficiently challenged, I can assure you. And again, sir, thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. We really, really appreciate your presence. Well, one more round of applause, please, to Mr. Chandra Matani, together with his students who ably demonstrated our yoga protocols and our asanas here for this morning. Now, moving to another pillar of our yoga practice, which we don't get to practice enough, is our pranayama, our breathing practice. And today, we are very honored by the presence of Ms. Clara de Herrera, who is a certified international yoga and meditation teacher who took her training in Mysore, India. She also speaks on holistic wellness and inner healing, as well as a coach and a philanthropist. Please welcome Ms. Clara de Herrera. Give her a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Test mic, all right. Namaste, everyone. And before we start with our pranayama practice, I have a quick question for everyone. Do you feel that you are meant to be here at this very moment, at this place? 
and uh, how's your gratitude? Do you feel grateful that you are here right now? Because my heart is overflowing with gratitude for the beautiful energy and the beautiful souls that are here in this venue today. So thank you very much. All right, we'll start with our pranayama practice. Prana is our life force, a quick background. And pranayama is extending that life force through breathing techniques. And the breathing technique that we will practice today is called Nadi Shodi. Nadi means our energy paths flow. Shodi means purification of our nadis. So this technique has a lot of, it's, there, there are a lot of ways to execute this technique this breathing practice, but I will share with you one of the simplest ways to practice this. Now the benefits of Nadi Shudi, it helps normalize our physiological and psychological functions. It helps balance our active and our passive bodies. It helps balance our solar and our lunar bodies our masculine and our feminine energies. All right, so limitations. This practice, this pranayama is for everyone. Everyone can do it. If you have hypertension, heart problems, if you are pregnant, just ensure that you are not holding your breath. You're breathing like a river, easily flowing like a river, all right? Okay, and um, when you practice this pranayama, make sure that you're doing it in an empty stomach. Or if you've eaten, wait until at least four hours after. And after the practice, wait at least 30 minutes to have your meal. Okay, all right, so I will do it first, watch me first, and then later we'll do it together, all right? So I'm gonna hold out my right hand, all right? And then I am going to fold my index finger and my middle finger. Watch me first, all right? This is called the Nasika Mudra, all right? Now for some, maybe you're having a hard time to straighten your the rest of your fingers, that's normal. If it's your first time to do this, it's a lot like life, right? If you're, it's your first time to do it, just practice more and you'll get better at it. Now your left hand, you have the option to do the Gyan Mudra to bring balance to your life. This Gyan Mudra, you just have to connect your index finger and your thumb, all right? And it stays there. Now back to our Nasika Mudra. Okay, now, using the tip of your thumb and your ring finger, you're going to inhale first, full inhalation and full exhalation. On your next inhale, you're going to cover your left nostril with your ring finger, with your right ring finger, okay? And you're going to inhale and exhale through the right nostril, okay? So inhale and exhale. Now you're going to close the right nostril with your thumb and open your left nostril and you're going to inhale and exhale. That's one round. Now you're going to close the left and open the right. You're going to inhale and exhale. Close the right nostril. You're going to open the left. That's round two. Now let's do it together. Okay. All right. Nasika Mudra. Okay. You're going to fold your index finger and your middle finger. Gyan Mudra, 
connect your index finger and your thumb, place it over your left knee. Now you're going to close your left nostril with your ring finger. Make sure you're not pushing your nose, you are just adding a gentle pressure. You don't want to have debated sep uh, septum after this, okay? All right, so you're going to inhale and exhale. Close the right nostril, nostril, open the left. Inhale and exhale. That's one round, release. Okay, we'll do the actual practice now. Center yourselves. Make sure that your spine is straight. You're stable. All right. Now you're slowly do, you're going to do a full inhalation and exhalation. Now let's do our Nasika Mudra. Okay. And our Gyan Mudra. Okay. So now cover your left nostril. Mindfully inhale and exhale through your right nostril. You can close your eyes. Now close your right nostril. Open your left. Slowly inhale and exhale. Close your left. Open your right nostril. Slowly inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Close the right nostril, open the left. Inhale. Exhale. Close, open the right. Inhale. Exhale. Close, open the left. Inhale. And exhale. Close, open the right. Inhale. Exhale. Close, open the left. Inhale. And exhale. Three more rounds. Slowly open, close the left, open the right. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly open the right. Close the right, open the left. Inhale. And exhale. Close the left, open the right, inhale, exhale. Close the right, open the left, inhale, exhale. Close the left, open the right, last one, inhale, and slowly exhale. Let go of your Nasika Mudra. You can do the Gyan Mudra on your right hand as well and just close your eyes. And feel that energy, that renewed energy in your senses now. You can slowly Inhale, as you inhale, your belly inflates. As you exhale, your belly slowly deflates. We're going to do five rounds of this. Inhale, your belly inflates. Exhale, your belly starting to deflate. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and 
and exhale. And last one, inhale. And exhale. Hands to your heart. Slowly open your eyes. Danya White, everyone. Clara, again, thank you so much for sharing with us your very simple pranayama practice. For those who want to gain a better pranayama practice, how can you just share with us how often should they do pranayama and where can they learn also more about pranayama? All right. And, uh, you're welcome, by the way, RJ. It's my pleasure. And uh, how often should we do pranayama? At least once a day. All right. For, uh, try it for at least five minutes every day. And you'll see the difference. And uh, most of the time, if you'll observe our usually our right nostril is more active and it's difficult to breathe on the right uh, on the left nostril so with this practice you will be able to observe that you'll be able to breathe easier and better because both nostrils are working and functioning really well and for pranayama practice you can go to my youtube channel it's clara de herrera all right, and I'm sharing a lot of tips there on yoga, on holistic wellness, and success as well. Okay, Clara, thank you so much. Let's give her one more round of applause, please. Thank My you pleasure. so much thank for you. sharing your Panayama practice. Very much needed during this time of the new normal. Exactly. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> our you. fourth pillar of the practice and part of our yoga protocols. May we please welcome right now for our meditation practice, Miss Jennifer Non. Jennifer is a certified yoga and meditation teacher. And since completing her certification back in 2015, she has been sharing her practice and her love for yoga with a wider community. She considers yoga to be a grounding force in her life through its ups and downs and would like to share her grounding force with the rest of us. Again, thank you for bringing us through a meditation practice. One more round of applause, please, for Miss Jennifer Aguas Non. <laughs> Hi everyone, good morning. So this morning, we will be practicing a loving kindness meditation. So some of you may be familiar with the metta prayer. So we will be um, chanting or speaking this, or a variation of this throughout our meditation practice. So loving kindness meditation is a way for us to practice unconditional love and kindness to ourselves, which can be hard to do, I think, right? We're our own harshest critics most of the time. And not just to ourselves, but to other people, not just to our loved ones, our family, our friends, but also to people we feel need neutral about, our colleagues, maybe the driver of the public bus that you rode in this morning, and also, another difficult thing, people we have negative feelings about. Maybe it's your boss. <laughs> maybe it's someone you had a disagreement with. And basically to everyone, to all human beings, to all living things here in this world, in this universe. So I invite you to find a comfortable seat. This can be your Sukhasana, Lotus, Half Lotus, Vajrasana. Allow your hands to rest, maybe on top of your knees or your thighs. If you'd like to close your eyes, you're welcome to do so. If you prefer to keep your eyes open, that's also perfectly fine. And just keep a soft gaze somewhere ahead of you. Feel your sit bones root down. And then at the same time, as you inhale, feel your spine lengthen, sit up tall. Relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Feel your chin be parallel to the ground. And let's just take a couple of moments here to ground ourselves with our breath. 
just noticing the inhale and the exhale. Maybe feeling that slight movement in your chest and your belly, the expansion as you inhale, and the contraction as you exhale. Noticing the rhythm and the cadence of your breath. And I invite you to take three clearing breaths with me here. Taking a deep breath in through the nose. And as you exhale, open the mouth, sigh it out. Ah. If you're still letting go of something here that you want to get rid of, think of that now, then take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, opening the, opening the mouth, sighing out the breath, and letting that go at the same time. <sighs> One more time. Inhale. And exhale, let it go. <sighs> and now I invite you to bring your attention inwards to yourself. Maybe picturing yourself in your mind's eye. Maybe seeing yourself as you sit there on your mat. Becoming deeply aware of who you are, of the person you are. Maybe even feeling this white light at the center of your chest. Noticing its warmth, its color. Cultivating this feeling of peace within yourself. And then repeating silently with me. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at peace. And we'll repeat this a few more times. And as we do so, I invite you to really feel these words in your heart. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at peace. May I be well, may I be happy, may I be at peace. One last time, may I be happy, may I be well, may I be at peace. Now start to think of someone that you are close to. And this can be a partner, a parent, a child, a friend, a family member. In your mind's eyes, seeing them sitting there right next to you. Seeing them in all the details that you can muster. Perhaps even feeling their presence right there next to you. And that white light in your chest Maybe start extending that white light out into that person next to you that you're envisioning. Feeling that same peace and love as you did earlier for yourself. And now silently saying to yourself, may you be well. May you be happy. May you be at peace. May you be happy. May you be well. 
may you be at peace. May you be happy. May you be well. And may you be at peace. One last round. May you be happy. May you be well. And may you be at peace. And now I invite you to think of someone you don't really have strong feelings either way. So someone that you have neutral feelings for. It can be somewhere, someone right there next to you. It can be, as I mentioned earlier, maybe the driver of the bus or the Jeep that you were in. Maybe a neighbor. And again, thinking of that person, imagining that person as if it was he or she was right next to you. Seeing them in your mind, feeling their presence there, and extending that white light as well to that person. And again, repeating the same phrases with me. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at peace. May you be well. May you be happy. And may you be at peace. May you be well. May you be happy, and may you be at peace. May you be well, may you be happy, and may you be at peace. One last time, may you be happy, may you be well, and may you be at peace. And now this may be a little more difficult, but I encourage you to see how you go here. Now picture in your mind someone you have strong feelings for. Maybe it's someone you worked with. Maybe it's a neighbor you had a quarrel with. Maybe it's a former friend. See that person as if that person is right next to you as well. Imagining them in your mind, seeing them there. And I know, again, this can be challenging. And so if the feelings are quite strong or still feels a bit raw, it's okay that you choose someone that you don't know personally well. Or maybe imagine this person as something else, as a, as a child, rather than as you remember them to be. And extend that white light to that person. And again, repeating the same phrases a couple of times. May you be well, may you be happy, may you be at peace. May you be well, may you be happy, may you be at peace. May you be well, may you be happy, may you be at peace. May you be well, may you be happy, and may you be at peace. May you be well, may you be happy, and may you be at peace. One last. May you be well, may you be happy, 
and may you be at peace. And lastly, think of all the living beings here right now, here in this hall, and then extend your awareness to all living beings beyond this hall, everyone else in the mall, everyone else here in Metro Manila, in the Philippines, and all the way outwards, all living creatures here right now in this world. Extending that white light outward until it encompasses the entire globe. And repeating with me a few times, may we be well, may we be happy, may we be at peace. May we be well, may we be happy, may we be at peace. And try to really feel these words in your heart as we repeat it for a few more times. May we be well, may we be happy, may we be at peace. May we be well, May we be happy. May we be at peace. One last round. May we be well. May we be happy. And may we be at peace. And I encourage you to sit here for a few deep breaths, just feeling that in your heart, that remaining feeling of love, of kindness, of peace in your heart. feeling its warmth, feeling it in every part, every fiber of your being. And to close out our entire practice this morning, I invite you to chant one word of Om with me if you'd like. Taking a deep breath in to prepare. Om. Bringing your hands together at your heart center. And if you'd like, maybe um, rubbing your palms together, generating heat. And then once you have that heat between the palms, gently applying them over your eyes, feeling the warmth. And in the warm, dark comfort of your hands, allowing your eyes to blink open if you had the eyes closed. And whenever you're ready, just allowing the hands to fall back down to your lap. And welcome back, thank you. And again, thank you so much, Om Shanti Om. It's Jennifer Noon for joining us here this morning. And can we please give one more round of applause to all our generous teachers who were with us this morning to share our yoga protocols with all of us during this, the 8th International Day of Yoga. And as we continue with our celebration, we are truly honored by the presence right now of our First Lady, the spouse of the Ambassador, Ms. Amrita Singh Kumaran, and of course, His Excellency Ambassador Shambhu Kumaran, who would like to greet all our yoga teachers and yoga schools here in Manila who are present to celebrate the International Day of Yoga. A round of applause, please, for His Excellency, our Ambassador, and His First Lady.
lastly, we would like to thank our teachers here for this morning. Please welcome back Miss Janice Cuevas. Janice, who brought us through our Surya Namaskar practice here this morning. Janice, thank you so much. We also had joining us for our yoga asana practice, Mr. Chandru Matani. Thank you so much. A round of applause, please, for Sir Chandu. And bringing us through our pranayama practice this morning, please welcome back Miss Clara de Herrera. Leading us through our meditation practice, please welcome back Miss Jennifer Aguas Non. kindly invite all of our four yoga teachers to please join us again on stage for a photo opportunity together with the ambassador and with our first lady. May I please welcome back Ms. Janice Cue Cuevas, Mr. Chandru Matani, Ms. Clara de Herrera to join us here on stage for a photo together with the good ambassador and his spouse. Thank you so much to all our yoga teachers for their generosity in sharing their practices here this morning. Let's give them one more round of applause, please. And today we're also thankful for the few yoga schools who at Manila who are joining us here today from all over the country. The Embassy of India would like to thank them for their hard work towards creating more awareness and making yoga more accessible here in the Philippines. Beginning with our friends from Yoga Manila. We would like to welcome our other yoga schools here in Manila, the Isha Foundation. Also joining us is the Brahma Kumaris Philippines Spiritual Foundation. Mm -hmm. 
please also joining us here on stage we have our friends from the yoga philippines and finally our friends from yoga plus Thank you to all the yoga schools who have joined us. Can we please welcome back on stage our friends from Yoga Manila, Isha Foundation, Brahma Kumaris, and Yoga Plus for a photo together with the ambassador and his spouse. Thank you so much for propagating the use of yoga in the Philippines. Another round of applause, please, to yoga, to all the yoga schools. And again, thank you so much, Ambassador, and to our first spouse for joining us here this morning. And today we're here for a very special treat because one of our yoga teachers is actually launching her book here this morning. So I'm, today we are going to have a book, How to Never Diet Forever. And it's very hard being here in the middle of SM Mall of Asia telling us not how to never diet forever. But today, we have our yoga, Ayurveda, and wellness expert, Ms. Clara De Herrera, who will be joining us here again this morning. And just to let you know a bit more about our esteemed yoga practitioner and fellow teacher, Clara, who just led us through Pranayama, is also known as the absolute transformational coach and speaker. She's a certified international yoga and meditation teacher. She took up her training in Mysore, India, and she has a certification on plant-based nutrition and has been featured in different media platforms, which include CNN Philippines, where she talks about holistic health and wellness. She is also the president of the CDH Wellness Corporation, a company that aims to make wellness achievable for everyone. Her years of research and education on the holistic approach to health in mind, body, and spirit has led her to develop her book, How to Never Diet Forever. This is a step-by-step -step system that teaches us how to shift our perspective to a way of approaching overall health to achieve longevity, beauty, and a life of service and fulfillment to others. May I please welcome back here on stage, Ms. Clara De Herrera. Clara, please join me here on stage. Maybe we can have two chairs here on stage if there's some chairs available. Thank you so much. And we've got the ambassador joining us here as well on stage. Now, just to let you know, the book is called How to Never Diet Forever. It's a truly inspiring so roadmap to a wholehearted, holistic way of living. It's much. not just a health and weight book. It's not a diet book. Don't let the title fool you. You'll discover more about the ancient wisdom of yoga combined with modern discoveries about achieving contentment, yes beauty, the peace, <laughs> without counting your calories forever. So, Clara, you still have your mic on you. So, again, Ambassador, before everything else, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, before everything, maybe, Ambassador, you, uh, we, I know that you're also an avid you. Thank you for supporting us here today. And, and, Clara, do you have a copy of the book so we can show some people right now how the book looks like? Yes. As, as she speaks here on stage. All right. Now, uh, I'm very curious here right now because many people, they might be concerned with more, um, you know, uh, mundane things or the, day, the everyday living. And, of course, they think at the start that, wow, this must be a great diet book. But actually, it's a stepping stone for them. They think you open it up. What, what inspired you to title the book in such a way? All right. Okay, so short story, quick one, I promise. And I shared this story in my interviews as well and with a lot of people. So I was a flight attendant for 15 years. And five years before I resigned as a flight attendant, I fell into what I call concealed depression. I'm a single mom, and that time 
I had a very bad spine condition. It was so bad that whenever I'm in the cabin serving the passengers, there were a lot of times when I would pass out because of the pain of my spine. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, I was in a very dark place in my life and uh, I was constantly comparing myself to the lives of the people around me. So every night I would just pray to God to take me so I will not wake up anymore and I even asked him before you know to just take my daughter's life as well so just to end that suffering and that depression. And then I got so exhausted of being just in this dark place in my life. And I consulted a very good friend. He's a friend of everyone. That friend is Google. I asked Google, how do you get what you want in life? How do you find true love? And what Google told me was to find true love, to get what you want in life, you have to love yourself first. And the most actionable way to love yourself is through yoga. So I did yoga even for five minutes and that five minutes became one hour, four hours. And then I decided to go to India to take up my yoga teacher training course. And one of those days when I was meditating, an insight came to me telling me to go back to the Philippines, serve people, share this message of hope and healing. And one of the ways that I found for me to be able to spread this message of hope and healing is through wellness by writing this book, How to Never Die It Forever. Now with the title, it's based on Ayurvedic concepts, on yogic principles, and come to think of it, 5,000 years ago, when Ayurveda started, when yoga started, there was no keto, vegan, paleo, vegetarian. There was no 1,300 kcal a day, right? So let this book be, um, give clarity, bring clarity to all of us on how we can approach our lives, our nutrition, longevity, based on this time-honored wisdom combined with modern discoveries. Thank you so much for bringing back the wisdom that you gained from India here to the Philippines. Thank you so much. My Mysore is the home of my own guru over there out of Mysore, India. For those who practice Ashtanga, yeah. uh, we all go back to Mysore, yes. India as well. Yes. And, and, and having said that, where can we actually buy a copy of your book? Can they buy it here right now while we're here in the International Day of Yoga? We're not allowed. <laughs> we're not allowed. But we have a special launch price at 31% off. You can go to Clara claradayh.com/shop oh, and that's the Clarity Herrera shop claradayh.com slash shop. shop okay and with that I understand that we have a very special surprise ambassador yes. as we launch today <laughs> uh, her book here uh, never never saying never be... how to never diet forever yes there we go and what a lovely book we have as she presents it to the ambassador here right now this is for you <laughs> Ms. This, is for this is for Ms. Vishwanjali <laughs> yeah That's and the, this, this okay. copy of the book will go to his wife and this copy goes to the ambassador this is as for well. ambassador. And just a copy. Yes. Uh, let's put the book over here again. That's How to Never Diet Forever, Nine Powerful Secrets to Beauty, Longevity, and Fulfillment Without Counting Calories Ever. A round of applause, please, again. Thank you, uh, Clara, for sharing with us your tips to never counting calories forever, and more importantly, how to live a long, la long well-lived life. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and Clara, there's a, a basket. We've got a surprise for, for you as well. Let me hold the book for you, so you can open up uh, the surprise that we have for you. It's just the okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, surprise! More yoga books for the ambassador over here again. Thank you so much. More yoga books. <laughs> and this goes to the, the most important person in the life of our ambassador. Again, thank you so much, Miss Clara De Herrera. And to the good ambassador for the Embassy of India celebrating 
yoga here in the Philippines and all over the world. And from what I understand, this is a simultaneous celebration being done all over the world. So right now, people can actually watch our yoga practice here in the Philippines, in India, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, all the way to Europe and Africa. Everybody who practices yoga is celebrating the, the International Day of Yoga, sponsored by the embassies of India all over the world. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, as we close off today's celebration, it is truly yeah. my honor and my pleasure to, to invite our ambassador, His Excellency Shambhu Kumaran, to offer a few words on this as we celebrate the International Day of yes. Yoga. Please give our ambassador. Let's, can we take a picture? Again, Clara, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. And now, Ambassador, will you also be teaching us yoga here right now, or will you be? <laughs> or it's a message for everybody. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's Excellency, Excellency Shambhu Kumar, and please give our good Ambassador a round of applause. Thank you, Arjit, and uh, Namaste, Mabu Hai to everyone. Uh, what an enchanted morning of yoga we've had, and. Uh, just to inform all of you that you were part of a global ring of yoga today to celebrate the International Day of Yoga. So I think uh, thank you, Philippines, for being part of this wonderful global celebration. At the embassy, we just want to thank all our partners today. And I want to particularly thank SM Mall of Asia uh, for their uh, outstanding support for providing us the venue and all the wonderful support that they have offered us. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, the partner associations, in particular the sponsors. We have the Philippines Indian, uh, Filipino Indian Commerce and Welfare Society, who sponsored our refreshments. We have the Philippines, uh, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Philippines, FIKI Philippines. In particular, immediate past president Mike Advani for giving us these wonderful t-shirts. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, and to Tata Consultancy Services, TCS, uh, who supported us with the mats today. So it's been really very generous of all of you to support this activity. And I want to thank all the Indian community associations for coming out today. And a special word of thanks to Miriam College for organizing one of the run-up events and for the Asian Center in the University of Philippines, Diliman, who also organized a run-up event to the International Day of Yoga. So thank you all. I hope you had a good time. Let me just request each one of you to reach out to your communities, especially to the children, introduce them to the world of yoga. Let us together build a beautiful friendship between India and the Philippines, beautiful relationships between our people, and let us build together a harmonious and peaceful world. Thank you very much. Namaste and Mabuhai. Okay, namaste. Again, thank you so much to our good ambassador. Thank you again to everybody for joining us here on the 8th International Day of Yoga. We do hope that you take... May we please have a round of applause for our wonderful MC today. Ambassador, thank you again for having me. What a pleasure to be here uh, and to join all of you in the yoga practice. You know, I was very pleasantly surprised when they asked me. They didn't even know that I was a yoga practitioner uh, when they asked me to host. But I guess it was such a wonderful day uh, to celebrate with the rest of you. It's so nice, you know, it's always hard to practice. It's always lovely to have your own practice, your personal practice, but it's so much better to practice in community because the prana is much better when you practice together with your community. So with this one, we hope that you carry that seed of your yoga practice when you go back to your respective studios, to your respective shalas, even in your own homes, continue the practice, join the communities, and let's continue to celebrate this wonderful practice together. And I look forward to seeing the rest of you at our ninth international Day of Yoga 
next year. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Mabuhay. Namaste. Om Shanti Om. We invite the rest of you to please turn for some refreshments courtesy of the Embassy of India. Please have a great day ahead. Again, one more round of applause, please, for our International Day of Yoga. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here this morning.